Hi everybody, Mike in Hook Woodcraft and this is my latest project, napkin holder. And I made this entirely with hand tools and I'll show you how I did it. You might have seen on my website I have a picture of one of these I made several years ago and it's a little bit different because I made it with power tools and there's an OG profile around the base and the corners are clipped and it's a little fancier. But uh, I think this one looks pretty nice and I'm, I'm happy with it. All right, so to show you how I figured out what the size of this wants to be, just take a napkin. This is a regular standard napkin. And by the way, they don't, they're not exactly square. It's a little bigger than six. It's like six and an eighth right there and six inches right there. So I don't think it matters which way you do it. The way I did it was just so that the fold is, uh, when you pull it out it's on the outside so that means that the six the long side is in between the uprights so I just really I just I took a napkin and put it on a board and figured out uh, you know I want a little bit of space in between here so there's a little bit of wiggle room so I left an eighth of an inch to either side of the napkin then of course the three quarter for the uprights and I want it about a quarter of an inch or something all the way around it because I'm going to put a round over on it so what I ended up with here is eight and a half and six and three quarters. And then these pieces end up being four and a quarter. You can change that height if you don't want it so tall. You can make it taller or shorter, it doesn't matter. But what I did was four and a quarter and two and a quarter. And that two and a quarter is so that I can leave three quarters of an inch here, I cut all this away, and I'll leave three quarters of an inch there. And to get this distance, I wanted to leave three quarters of an inch right there so that it's a consistent three quarter all the way around. And then I'm just going to, since this is a three quarter inch notch, this is a three quarter inch uh, arc, so half of three quarters of an inch is three eighths. So I'll come down three quarters plus three eighths and I'll make a mark and I can set my dividers at three eighths of an inch and just finish that. And if you have a compass, you know, you can use that or you can just scratch it in with this divider. I've bought, I don't know how many pairs or I don't know if you call it a pair, but compass. And this is dividers, obviously. Dividers have points, compass has the pencil. and I don't know where they go. I lose them. I put them, I use them sometimes outside of the shop drawing stuff and I just lose them. So I'm not buying another pair. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll just, I'm just going to tape this pencil right to one of the legs. And there you go, instant compass. And I'll take my marking gauge set at three quarters and I'll mark these lines all the way around it like that. Now here I just wanted sort of a gentle kind of arc at the top rather than having it being round I thought it would look better so I, I just measured down from the corners 3 eighths of an inch on either side and then I just sketched it in and I'm gonna smooth that out with hand tools so you know that doesn't have to be a perfect arc or whatever. Okay so I'm gonna mark I'm gonna go ahead and cut the tenon beforehand and I'm gonna mark this at 3 sixteenths of an inch so I'm just gonna come right around it and score a shoulder line now I'm gonna make the tenons a half inch I'm gonna use this chisel to cut the mortises in the base plate so I want, I want my my tenons to be this wide I'm gonna give it a, just a quick little mark there And there and I'll check that and that's just about I don't know if you can see that this is my marking gauge line and I want to make sure that the mortise I'm chiseling out is gonna match that I'll go ahead and scribe this all across too I hope this makes sense to you I know some of you it will some of you it won't but you'll see what this is all about here in just a minute as soon as I cut all this out and now I'm going to chisel this away. So I'm going to 
deepen these lines just a little bit more. Try to do this so you can see it. I need another dog hole. I was trying to figure out a good way to hold this and show you what I'm doing at the same time. Uh, normally I would hold it a different way, but what I've just what I've done is I've just used a combination of my knife and wide chisel just to chisel away at this. Oop. Until I get it fairly close to where I want it. And I'm not using a hammer because this stuff is so soft. I'm afraid of driving the chisel straight on through and splitting it off. But you can see there, hopefully you can see that. Uh, I'm staying off my lines for the time being. And the reason for that will be clear shortly. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to cut that curve off there. And I'm going to saw down these lines and finish that off with a cupping saw. I'm probably going to use the cupping saw up top too. And then I'll actually carve a little V in there. And you've probably seen other people do this as well. This is not my trick. I didn't make it up. And what that does is that helps me, my saw will track better. And now I'll take, i finish this off with my coping saw. And I'll get the blade started. I'm going to have to turn them. And then I'll set it in the vise. So now I'm just going to start shaping these pieces a little bit better. Okay, so this is what I've ended up with. And what I'm going to do is, because this base plate is going to have a round over all the way around the edge, I'm going to go ahead and round over all the edges here, the outside edges of this, not the inside. I'm going to leave that. I'm going to clean this up with sandpaper. And so what I'm doing here is I'm just scribing around all around the outsides. And I'll do it this way as well. Just to give me a guide, something to work with. And I'm going to go around this thing with uh, probably a combination of my block plane and, the, and my number four hand plane. And just sort of start working it until it looks good. To get inside here, I just wrapped a piece of sandpaper around a stick. Like so, and obviously if you have a rasp, that's even better, but you can just, just get it good. Get all the saw marks out. And to get this uh, radius, I wrapped a piece of sandpaper around a three quarter inch dowel. But I want to show you how the joint goes together. And I have this this is what I was using to sort of figure out how I wanted this joint to be. And this is just uh, rough stuff. But again, here I have my stub tenons. And I, I didn't. what I didn't do was make a shoulder on the inside there. And I just don't think it's necessary. And it seemed to me like instead of trying to shape both of these tenons, you know, shape different tenons on each leg, I just, I just shaped the whole tenon and then just saw the middle part away. So hopefully that made sense to you. And it seems to me like once this is in here, you, you really don't need that extra shoulder. And since it's on the inside, um, you really won't notice it if you don't get that joint real pretty. Um, 
I think you'll find out that that this is probably the easiest and best way to go about this if you're going to make one of these for yourself. Like I said, I wanted to leave a quarter of an inch here for because I'm going to put the round over in. And so I found the center here. And these two points represent the three quarters of an inch in between. And then I added this eighth of an inch, which is what this um, shoulder is. So this is three eighths of an inch off of the edge. And what I'll do here is, I hope you can see this, is I'm going to set the legs right up against that line and they're going to straddle these two points. So, if you understand what I did, that, that centers the upright and it puts it on the, it puts the tenons on this line. And there, once again, I'll, I'll probably just put a little pencil mark, you know, where I, where I know the tenons are and I can go from there. So here's my mortises laid out. And you can see that I'm just going to stay right inside that line and inside that pencil line. I just went off the chisel and used my marking gauge to mark those lines. And I'll just chisel it out. And so after a little bit of scraping and cleaning up, there's my mortises. And of course I have this marked front left. And this is what I'm calling the front of my piece. So you can see that this is very tight. Pretty good. I'm very happy with that. And I want to say that I did have to shave just a little bit off of this back tenon. Um, and I'm sorry, I apologize for not showing that, but I got lost in the moment. It's always really exciting when you get, you know, to the end here and all you have to do is fiddle just a little bit. So I, I literally just took a little sliver off of this side and it went right in. And I want to mention, you know, if you're new to joinery or handwork or woodworking at all, you should always make your tenons or, you know, joints like that a little bit bigger than what you think they need to be. Because it's always going to surprise you when your joint is too loose and it's very discouraging. I'm going to finish shaping these parts, sanding them down a little bit, and I'm going to go ahead and plane off my round over here. I need to clean this edge up real quick with my hand plane. So now I'm going to go around this with my round over and I'm just going to do this thing again. And this is just the guide. And when you're doing this, um, it's best to do end grain first because in case this little you know piece at the end breaks off, you'll catch that going the other way. And just like I did with the dowel in order to make that round shape. I'm starting with the chamfer here and then I'll just work these corners. I'll just keep sort of changing my angle and going around it until it's round. And you're going to want to keep checking here to make sure that you don't round it over too much and uh, uprights end up hanging over the round over. So I'm just going to probably do this a little bit more and then I'll sand on it a little bit and that'll be that. This is the dowel that I made by hand in my last video. If you want to see how I did that you can check that out. But I've already done one side of this just because this video is getting long enough already and I'll show you how I did that. But I want to mention that I recommend you do one side of it first in case your you know measurement gets a little weird or whatever. Use this side of it to mark the other. And what I'll do is I'll take a straight edge. I can just mark that. Like so. And like so. And I don't have a lathe, so I can't I can't really turn this. So I'm going to show you how I did it by hand. And if my ends are good and square, I can just grab all the way around that.
And then what I did is I took a chisel and started making this little notch. I'll do it on the other side. And I'll go right around it like this. And once I have that little notch started, I'll put it in my fancy cradle and I'll just cut down it. And now I'm going to take my saw and just sort of make some relief cuts. So now I've got this, I've got this shaped where I want it and I'm just going through and just sort of trimming little bits here and there where it doesn't look, you can just sort of eyeball it and see whether it's close. And the other thing is just take, take your upright and make sure it's a little loose like this, side to little side to side action, and make sure it can spin freely all the way up and down in the upright. So then uh, once I have that done, you know if, you, if your stock here is three quarters of an inch, you know that if you've got a piece of same paper wrapped, wrapped around a three quarter inch block and it fits in there, then it should be loose enough, obviously. So I'm just gonna sand these down a little bit more. And now we're gonna give the whole thing a test fit real quick. And that looks good. It's spinning freely, it's moving up and down well. Once I do a little bit of final sanding and get these corners uh, rounded over just a little bit, I'll do touch-ups all the way around it, and then we'll call it done. This is a little longer video than I normally make, and um, just like the chisel box video, I, I just it was so much footage to edit that it just was a little overwhelming. Hell, I could have made two of these things in just the time it took me to edit this video. So if you stuck with me this long, I really appreciate it, and uh, thanks for watching.